Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. Uh, my name is Martin Turner. We're running this series throughout the year, uh, one episode a week. Uh, and we're, we're moving up to the halfway mark here. We're not quite there yet. But um, today, we're going to be talking about rules in job jackets. Now, if you've been following, you'll know a few weeks ago, we did job jackets. And, and I hope you've experimented with that and seen the power of that. But there's one part which I said we'd talk about another time. That was rules. We're going to do that now. So the great blessing of the digital revolution uh, is that everything you ever wrote can, you know, in principle, be repurposed later on. So emails you sent right at the dawn of email uh, in 1994, whatever it was, um, you, you could, uh, if you still have that on your server, you could just cut, copy and paste it and paste it into a new document. Um, well, doing it from that era wouldn't put, cause a problem. But since the, um, uh, since the late 90s, uh, email programs have had formatting, obviously Word and WordPerfect, if you use that, and even WordStar had formatting in them as well. Uh, and uh, computers will very happily uh, copy all those attributes across when you go from document to document. Uh, so uh, the result is that we'll quite often get sent text which has been cobbled together from all kinds of different things. Uh, and uh, it's got all the fossils of that in it, font changes, uh, it used to be that, that Word, it's not anymore, but it used to be that Word, if you had more than a certain number of font changes, would just crash. Uh, and so all kinds of, of workarounds were used. So the text you get can be full of bad formatting. Um, what's more, when you've been working on a layout and then you copy and paste it into another layout, it could well be that you're bringing bad formatting and other things into that. Of course, we make errors as well. Now, you've probably at some point uh, used uh, Acrobat pre-flighting or some other pre-flight utility. And pre-flighting uh, checks various things like RGB, CMYK to make sure that what you're doing is suitable for the final output format. And that's very great and very important. But what it can't do uh, is tell you that you've used the wrong font or that you've put a font in color when they're supposed to be black and white. You've used the wrong color. Uh, you've used the wrong type size. You've rotated um, a box or something like that. It can't do your document hygiene things. That's where rules in Quark Express come in. So let's go to the screen. Um, and I've got a, 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 this is a bit from the book. Um, uh, just, I, I copied and pasted it in. This is not the layout of the book. And uh, I've, I've added in a couple of errors, uh, but I've also created some rules. And where we're gonna find these is in file, job jackets, evaluate layout. And what you can see here is I've got, for layout one, a rule set. Um, no RGB text, no 11 point, only stone typeface, accidental rotation on pasteboard. And let's just have a quick look at that. So no RGB text. So this, this book was set to be done in black and white. Now, I've, I've worked on documents in the past which began life uh, in full color. And then somebody wanted to make just the cover full color and the text black and white and everything. But of course, blue text might look great in color, but when you do it in black and white, it's just gray. And if it's gray of a quite a small point size, it's gonna look quite rubbish. Blue, unfortunately, is quite hard to spot. Most screens have got a slightly bluish tinge. Uh, and when you're reading through late at night, it's hard to see it. Your proofreader may not spot it, uh, particularly if it's quite a dark blue, uh, because they've had a color uh, output. And uh, you're going to work quite hard to get that. So in that rule, I'm going to just edit rule now. Um, so that's the rule, no RGB text. Edit rule. I'm going to go, so I've got a number of options here. I've got text characters, boxes, text boxes, picture boxes, lines, text, text paths, pictures and fonts. I can look at all kinds of things uh, to tell me if the document is compliant with my plan or not. And, and these are built into the job jacket. But you don't have to create a separate job jacket if you don't want to, you can just create it for this document. So um, I'm gonna have color, uh, and we'll then, now do next. And uh, the rule is color is RGB. Uh, and uh, if I do next, uh, I've, I can put a description in. Um, uh, this is a mono document, uh, color should 
not be used. And I can either make this noted, not rec recommended or prohibited. And I can add some instructions in, uh, 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 please use find and uh, uh, change to get rid of these um, or, uh, or whatever I want to do. Um, okay, I'm just going to finish that. And uh, I'm now going to run that on the document. And uh, okay, so what it's told me is uh, it's found RGB text errors. Um, so if I, uh, if I now look at those, um, uh, what I should be able to do, a showcase, uh, is um, go back to the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to show my first case. And it's just found this, um, let's go out of that for a second. It's found this text over here in RGB blue. So, uh, okay, in that particular case, I should have spotted that proofreading, but if it was quite a dark blue, I might well not have done. Let's look at some other rules which we can put in. So, uh, okay, evaluate layout again. Well, what about accidental rotation? So. Something which uh, is great in the newer versions of Cork Express is I can use the, uh, the mouse pad on, or, or the, the, the trackpad on a, on a MacBook Pro and rotate a box with my two fingers. It's very cool, unless I do it by accident. An accidental rotation by, say, one degree uh, could be a real problem. It could also be that I've, I've been working with a designer who loves rotating boxes to seven degrees, thinks it's really cool, but it's not part of the brand of this document. And I want to get rid of all of them. So in this case, let's look at that rule. Um, I'm going to pick boxes. So this is any kind of boxes, uh, text boxes, picture boxes. I'm going to take rotation. Uh, and uh, rotation is not equal to zero degrees. Um, I can put more rules in. Uh, rotation uh, uh, is any fractional value. Um, uh, rotation is... Uh, less than um, uh, 10 degrees uh, and greater than uh, zero degrees. So I, I could, for example, set a rule in place that says, if I've got a really rotated box, that's cool, you know, obviously determined to do it. But if it's a half degree by accident, that's just gonna, that's gonna look really, uh, really naff on the page, really, really poor. Uh, it will look like it's a mistake and it will be. So this is going to find that. Um, Okay, again, I can uh, set that to be noted, tells me I've done it, not recommended or prohibited, definitely prohibited for that. Uh, but let's cancel that. Let's, oh, let's look at what else we can do. Sometimes you're working through a document and you're putting various things onto the pasteboard uh, because to use them later on. And, and it can be that you've left stuff on the pasteboard that you actually needed to use later on but you never got around to it, you didn't spot it. Maybe you turn trim view on, and in trim view, you only see what's on the page. Anything on the pasteboard is uh, invisible. So um, I can set this to um, uh, boxes, uh, position, uh, next. Position is on the pasteboard. Um, or I can also have extending off the spread. So you've got a box which you thought was in the right place, but actually, uh, you've got a, a, it's extending off, or you've got a document with no trim at all. Uh, you've got a document which doesn't allow bleed, and yet you've got a picture which is going off uh, the page. So what, I can just set that, and again, uh, have it check for me. Uh, what else can we do? Let's, let's look at some stuff. So um, background, uh, supposing that I'm not happy uh, with the background uh, being in uh, a process color, so, for example, I'm working in a spot color job. It's just uh, black and uh, Pantone 485, my favorite color red. Uh, and, uh, you know, at some point, some process colors crept in because uh, I've been, um, uh, you know, importing a document from something else. Uh, again, you could leave that until pre-flighting. Pre-flight utility would find that for you, but it's much easier to build it in now into Quark Express uh, rather than wait for them. Um, there are all kinds of things you can do with uh, rules. Uh, and as we looked at in the preferences a few weeks ago, you can set the document to automatically evaluate. So I'm going to go to preferences 
uh, over here, Quark Express. On Windows, it's in the Help menu, uh, Preferences. And uh, I'm going to go to, um, uh, I'm going to find this, Job Jackets. Yeah, Layout Evaluation, Evaluate Layout on Output. So if I set that in as a preference, that means that if I've put rules into the document, whenever I try to print it or to PDF it, ready for output, it's going to run that evaluation and tell me if I've made any mistakes. Um, it's not just obvious things like that. You can also set it to evaluate how many pages. If you're working on a 16-page magazine, now, back in the days of print, uh, if you got that and the guy was going to um, output it to the image setter, uh, then uh, that's already some cost, and then uh, develop it into plates, etc. He'd probably check first and ring you up and say, you know your 16-page magazine, it's got 17 pages, because some pages overflowed somewhere and you didn't spot it. Uh, but these days of digital print, you could actually have printed 4,000 of them um, by the time somebody spotted that it, it's got a whole extra spread in, because on a, on a 16 page magazine, a 17th page means a whole extra uh, four sides, which is going to look appalling. You have to reprint the whole job. Um, you can set in rules to count the pages and to alert you if it goes above the pages. Lots and lots of features there, far too many to go into all of them, but do look through. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, my name is Martin Turner. This is Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. You can get the book of the same name from Amazon or your local bookseller. And I look forward to joining you for the rest of the series.